let's see here. Containment unit looks pretty good. Uniforms are clean, and Slimer's been fed, at least for now. Oh, hello there. I suppose you are wanting me to read the news. Well, my associates have been quick to point out that uh, we don't do anything for free around here. But perhaps I can make an exception just this once. Let's get on with it. Phelps County Regional Medical Center will change its name to Phelps Health on January 1st. The Board of Trustees voted unanimously during its monthly meeting on October 24th to rename the healthcare organization. The change will affect all of PCRMC's facilities. The decision to change the name was made to better define PCRMC, which has experienced significant growth over the past several years. Missouri Attorney General Josh Hawley made a campaign stop in Lebanon on October 27th. He spoke to a crowd of 100 people and said the race between he and incumbent Claire McCaskill would determine control of the U.S. Senate. He added, quote, That means we have 10 days to fire Claire McCaskill because the future of our country is at stake. The primary election will take place on November 6th, so get out there and let your voice be heard. It was a sunny, windy day for this year's Route 66 Cuba Fest on October 20th. A big crowd gathered for the annual celebration to enjoy shopping, food, and activities in downtown Cuba. Included in this event is the popular Cuban Gravel Crisis bike race, an apple butter station, activities for children and adults, and of course, plenty of local food. This year's festival included talks by Route 66 experts Joe Sounderman and Jim Hinckley. Leanne was there. Cuba is one of those communities that has really embraced its 66 heritage. Um, here's the motel, of course. It's actually the oldest continually operated motel on Route 66, anywhere. Okay, the thing has never closed since 1934. Mm -hmm. um, during the Cold War, the bank down here put a sign up that said, let us hijack your business to Cuba. Uh, that was pretty cute, too. I mean, you know, of course, now it's the murals. Everybody knows. And so you've really hit on something that other cities can't do. All right, they're waiting to get on the trolley. It's here. The trolley is here. They're waiting to get on. Come on over and get a free ticket. People ask why. Route 66 is so ingrained in our psyches. It's because it's the only highway really that had a role in popular culture. And it was the only highway that had a group that spent their entire time promoting it. This Lynn's not a place that you can get to. It's, it's uh, south of Prague and it's north of Vienna. And it, it's just not an easy place to get to. But yet 20,000 people plus attended. And it was truly uh, an international event. We came together as a community and promoted Route 66 as a linear community. We came together and weren't just narrowly focused on our neck of the woods. We worked together to promote the entire road. There again, you can see some of the materials I distributed from Cuba and different things there. And uh, it's already starting to work. And the, the, so the Route 66 community is so unique. We come together as a community to market and promote. We had a great opportunity to talk with a lot of these people, get an idea of what they were looking for, what they were wanting to see. And Cuba is what they were wanting to see. A West Plains man was charged with domestic assault after he allegedly tried to pull a ring off a woman's finger. A warrant was issued for 27-year-old Taylor Wilcox after police interviewed the victim, who said Wilcox almost broke her finger. She ran outside and into her car, where Wilcox pressed his arm against her neck as she was trying to get away. The relationship between the two is unknown. Bond has been set at $4,500. Missouri State Parks held three meetings in Mid-Missouri this week to interact with citizens 
about the Rock Island Rail Line Corridor being developed into a long-distance recreational trail. These open house meetings had stations set up with information about costs of trail development and maintenance, as well as public safety, landowner, legal, and environmental issues. You know something about that one. We spoke with key people about the project. I'm uh, Mike Sutherland, Deputy Director of Missouri State Parks um, for Resources. We wanted to have these meetings on the corridor, um, on, in towns along the corridor, so, um, so that people who lived in these areas would have an opportunity to gather information and also share their comments and their uh, perspective. Chris Niewald, I am a co-founder and past president and current board member of Missouri Rock Island Trail Incorporated. Uh, I'm here tonight because we are so excited that the Rock Island Trail may soon become a reality. And I'm Greg Harris, the executive director of Missouri Rock Island Trail. And Missouri State Parks is, is wanting to get feedback about the idea of forming what will be, we hope, one of the longest rail trails in the United States. Certainly no decision has been made, but we're being very deliberate, and some people think too deliberate, um, but it's a very significant decision. You know, this is a decision that will affect Missouri for decades to come. We have a huge park system that um, is magnificent. I think you go anywhere in the United States, Missouri is an example as far as a Missouri park system. And so um, part of that is all the great facilities, but part of it is that we've been able to manage those facilities and we need to make sure that any decision that we make is best for our park system, best for Missouri. My name is Warren Wood and I'm with Amherst, Missouri. I'm pleased to see uh, Missouri State Parks holding this informational meeting. Uh, what you see is a 144-mile potential for economic development, jobs, and better communities in Missouri. And I'm glad to see state parks talking to the public about this opportunity. Missourians support their, their state parks, and we are so happy about that. You know, when you go to other states, they charge fees to get in or, or have to um, have uh, higher fees for other services, where in Missouri you don't um, pay an entrance fee to get in our parks. Um, but that also creates some challenges as, as well, because we have to make all of our system fit within our budget. So as we consider um, changing or adding anything to that system, we have to really appreciate that it has to fit within that framework. You have to look at this, okay, there's the cost for the development, but then we also look at the enormous economic development opportunity. From our discussions in you know multiple different public hearings over the last two years while this project's been discussed, we've seen overwhelming support from Missourians, uh, the towns along the rail bed, and even from a number of economic development and biking organizations in other states. It's really, it's really important that we bring out as much support for this trail project as possible. Uh, State Parks has yet to make a decision. Hopefully that will happen before the end of the year, but we need to let them hear the voices of all the many people that support this worthy project. And it's just so important that it be accepted now. Uh, whatever development occurs can happen over time. We really are uh, hoping that um, in that conversation that we have and that exchange that we have with the, with the people who attend, that they get an appreciation of the um, huge responsibility that um, any kind of project, potential project, could be. We have a deadline, February 21st of 2019, so certainly any decision that we will make would have to be um, prior to that. The first ever Boopalooza trick-or-treating event was held on Halloween night in downtown Rolla, sponsored by Rolla's Downtown Business Association. Pine Street was closed to traffic so children and families could move safely from booth to booth and request that most desired and sacred symbol of the occasion, candy. Food and live entertainment were also offered, something for everyone, on Halloween night. We go! I hate when she does that. Looks like I've got to get going though. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.
Whether you live in Thayer, Rolla, West Plains, or Lebanon, many retailers and shippers plan to hire more than 700,000 seasonal employees this holiday season. Better Business Bureau is advising for job seekers to polish up their resumes, research potential employers, and apply right away. Major retailers like Walmart, Target, and Macy's, and shipping companies like UPS are all planning to hire seasonal workers this year. BB offers the following advice for job hunters this holiday season. Start your job search earlier rather than later. Retail, shipping, restaurants, and catering companies are common sources of seasonal employment. This is the time for job hunters to determine which job suits them best, identify the companies they'd like to work for, and then begin submitting applications and resumes. Work where you shop. Try to identify seasonal employment opportunities at businesses where you shop. You will already be familiar with the company and its products, and discounts available to employees can mean significant savings when shopping for gifts. Discounts can range from 20 to 40 percent for seasonal employees. Put your best foot forward. Even if you're just picking up the applications at stores in the mall, dress neatly and nicely and be prepared for an interview. This includes being familiar with the company's brands and products. Retail job hunters need to focus on impressing the potential employers with their customer service skills. Be flexible. Full-time employers usually have the first choice on preferred hours and shifts. As seasonal employees, you can go ahead and expect to work long, sometimes inconvenient hours, possibly including Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. If this is a second job, in addition to your day job, be upfront and be very clear with your new employer about your available hours. Also be incredibly aware of classified ads for mystery shopper jobs. There are a lot of illegitimate ones out there. Also make sure to go ahead and check out business profiles before starting employment somewhere. Go to bbb.org and you can take care of that there.